You're talking about restructuring. You know, people, every people have different ideas of restructuring. Yes. Some say the devolution of powers. Some say go back to regional government. Some say, you know, what, what is your idea of restructuring? That is the reason I am for constitutional uh, remake. Remake the constitution. Simply. Yes. Because all these issues that are people are asking for, like you said, if you talk to somebody in the north, the idea of restructuring is different from the one in the southwest mm. and the southeast. Some people have reduced restructuring to state police. You know? mm. So people want it to go back to regional government. You know? mm. But the question they don't ask them is that you think about the southwest. I'm from Mondo State. Some people are from Ekiti State. If you have a regional government, that means we collapse all the state and come back to Ibadan mm. as the headquarters of... In Southwest. Who's going to do that? <laughs> so the solution is all these items all the, on the bucket list of restructuring, they are things that will affect the constitution. So why waste your time cherry picking? Why don't you just go for a, a new constitution where everybody well represented will say, look, I want to put in the constitution referendum. Yes, but I mean, yeah. everybody says the question is, is bad, does not, it does not cover everybody's yeah. interest. What exactly do you want to change in that constitution? I want the constitution, the constitution as it is now is a fraudulent so document. So what do you change it's, it's just, I want the constitution to be made afresh. To put what inside it? Everything that everybody wants to change. Like what? Some people might even want to ask for gay rights. <laughs> I'm just saying. How Do you believe in gay rights, sir? No, I, no, of course. What's my business with I don't believe that government should litigate over who sleep with who. Hmm. Yes. So you think the government should allow gay rights? The rights that we have to sleep with women, was it government that allowed it? Nature. <laughs> no, nature. Nature. Yes, because that's yeah, the nature. Yeah, but it does not align with our culture and our beliefs. Yeah, that's, that's what you think, because you think that your culture is limited to your culture. But if you're Yoruba, who, who, who do you think they call Akmo? What do you call Akmo, sir? Akmo are gay people. Hmm. They say Akmo, Kulayanle, Bobo, Obere, Tuwale, and your other one. It's how they cover up homosexuality in Europe. And if you go to the north, the people they call Dandaudu, who dress like women, cross dressers, who do you think they are? Hmm. So people are just here pretending that this culture does not exist. It's always, it has always been with us. But it's an attempt to litigate it that made it become problematic. Hmm. Because there are things that people just hide. And some of the really powerful, strong people in Nigeria, most of them are, plenty of them are bisexual. Like who, sir? Well, I don't know. It, like I said, it's not my business to reveal who is who. But what I'm saying is that we're talking about constitution. I'm yes. just saying, like, when South Africa apartheid was there, there was no gay rights. When the blacks took over, hmm. they inserted gay rights in there. So I'm just giving that as an example, that different people will come with what they want the constitution to cover. So when you with minorities, majorities, mm. in youth, women. Capture everybody's interests. Yes. But Something when, like, when you, you when know, you religion, yourself. even culture. So, so it will be a reflection of all of this, whether it's written or written. Mm. I prefer written constitution. Well, when you structure yourself, do you, do you want to give the states more independence? Do you think the, the, the center <clears throat> is too powerful? That's what I'm talking about. That it should not be Shore's only idea. It should be everybody's idea. But what's the Shawara's idea? My, my own idea is that if you want to run a federal system, make it federal. Mm. And what it means is that states should have greater control on a number of issues. For instance, it should not be the federal government's job to still carry Maja Maja, that is yellow fever police, to be directing traffic in Lagos. Mm. It should not be the federal government's job to be issuing driver's license in states. It, should be, it shouldn't be the federal government's job to be involved in sanitation. What about state police? The, yes, including campus police. Hmm. Americans have campus. What do we do as the leader of the country to ensure that police, there's a single standard for training all our policemen? So you want to, you want to have state police? Fine. Well, come and train them at the, federal, uh, at the federal facility. Or if you want to build your own facility, the federal government will have oversight so that we don't have rogue state police because mm. you can't trust these politicians. The moment they lay their hands on state policemen that are armed, they will never allow their opponents to rest or win elections.
talking about, talking about police, uh, let's quickly talk about um, insecurity in the country. Yes. Um, uh, I've heard different approaches to this security matter. Article says is the unifier. They can unify the entire country and you know, break all the different um, rebel groups in different states. I've heard uh, Senator Ogunlewe, who says that they should empower the police instead. They know the nooks and crannies of the entire country. Every, every local government has a police station, for instance. And so if they, if they are given more resources, they'll be able to you know, curb these insecurities here and there. I, I want to know your own stand view on what do, we, what, what do we need to do today to curb insecurity in the country? It's a look at the source of insecurity, number one. And what is the biggest source of insecurity? Inequality, right? Poverty, corruption, and um, lack of social uh, security for the citizens. Solution should be in three phases. The first is, of course, to arrest insecurity right now. Mm. And in which case, it might require that we bring in even people who are not Nigerian security forces, because our security forces are too compromised. To end so you think we should bring in foreign... Yes, mercenaries, if necessary. I say if necessary, mm. to just arrest it. You know? And this is not something I should be saying in public. <laughs> I'm so ashamed to say that a country of 200 million people, giant of Africa, you know, giant of failure, as I like to call it, is going to have to rent people to come out. But our security agencies are too weak, they are too compromised, they are too corrupt right now to fight the security the way we should fight it. Mm. The same Nigerian security, Nigerian army that went and defeated rebels in Syria alone and Liberia, they can't defeat common ragtag bandits. In what do you think part. is the cause for that? Corruption, you know. So put in whatever you need to put to arrest it. Oversight, uh, collaborations, even in sharing intelligence with foreign countries. Because the US, the UK, Canada, even South Africa don't trust us enough to say, look, we want to share intelligence with you. We know one Boko Haram guy here, and you can arrest him. They will never do that because they, don't, you, they know you're going to tell them before, before, you, the thing mm. is, uh, uh, it, before the conversation is over. Look at the UAE. Capture some guys that say we're funding Boko Haram. Pass intelligence to Nigeria. Nigeria claimed they arrested 400 of them, most of them BDC owners. Have you ever heard about their prosecution? But when it comes to Nam Dekano, oh, we have captured the terrorists. You know, he must die and rot in jail. So, but the real terrorists... Do you identify with the struggles of Nam Dekano? Oh, well, you know, I identify with any struggle. It's part of what I'm talking about, the Constitution. You see, what do you think is the reason why there's a Biafran struggle today? We went on a shooting spree against Igbos, right, in the 60s and over three million people died. We came out of the war saying nobody was defeated, nobody won. Of course, we know that there's no war that ends without uh, casualties. Mm. The casualty was more on their side. We never reintegrated them. We don't respect them. We treat them like trash. And they keep saying, look, we don't belong here because it seems like Nigeria is animal farm. Some animals are more uh, superior to others. So that's what is leading to this. So if, 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 that, kill, if that's the case, do, if do, do you Kano think to, it's better to align with an OB presidency? No. I, since, I mean, since, you know, we have only IPOB, integrated these people, and he, he sounds if, right now like... IPOB uh, is not aligning with OB. Yeah, but I mean, if, I'm if, just if, saying, if an Ibo man becomes president, he might, he might allay the fears of the, of the survivors. But do you know what they did to the freedom fighters in the land? They were killing them and throwing them into Izu River. Do you think that this thing should be zoned presidency? No, I don't believe that. I think we should find competent people. Look, if this country... Every region is, has competent people. Yes, that's what I'm saying. If this country is well-governed, do you think anybody will be asking who is the president? Mm. Nigerians, when they travel to Canada or the Jaguar in general, do they go and be knocking the door of the councillor of uh, their counties? Mm. I don't even and know... say who is, who is I don't even know the mayor of my city in the U.S. Because all the things that need to be done is done. I only met him once. The mayor of the city where I live is also the football coach <laughs> of the local league, as they call it. Nobody cares about him. They pay him very well. He does his job. But as long as you are doing your job, nobody's going to ask, oh, 
Mayor, you have done enough. Can we zone it to, uh, you know, the Italians now? Should we zone it to Palestinians? Or, because we have all these groups also in various cities in the U.S. Absolutely. Let's find competent people to work with. Even Obi himself, as you have heard him several, he said, mm. nobody should vote for him because he's Igbo or because he's from the southwest, I mean, from the southeast, or because he's Christian. Now they should vote for him based on his own alleged competence. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's what he said. So if he's not saying that, why should anybody then be talking about zoning when he doesn't want the presidency uh, zoned to him? Let's quickly talk about um, the, the APC candidate. Which one? I shall be able to I mean, look on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so we saw recently, two days ago, at the peace accord signing yes. and how you challenged um, Shetima. Um, yes. What's your initial relationship with? with the APC candidate and his, and his vice president? I don't know them. Hmm. I don't know them. And I'm, it's so disappointing that, you see, there are certain things that I agree with some young people in this country that should never happen. There's an affliction that must not happen to Nigeria again, and that's the PDP and the APC affliction. You think Tinobu is an affliction? Yes, and Lagos. They should look at their Lagos now. You know, I think of the same thing with Atiku. You know, I, Tinubu did not come that day. I was there, but if you see Atiku, Atiku is also frail. You know, he could barely work. And you know, I called him and said, "Why don't you just go back to Dubai where you stay <laughs> and let Nigeria be?" And he was saying that you too, you don't stay in Nigeria now. I go said, back to America. I said, I said, no, I stay in Nigeria. I've always, I said, since 1992, you've been doing this. It doesn't. It didn't work for you. Just let Nigeria be. But I cannot be opposed to those two people. And then embrace an idea that I know is false, which is that it's also PDP that is, in, that is running the Labour Party. You know, who, who, who do you see always with them? Wike, or Tom, or Basonjo, Babangida. These are major PDP henchmen. So I cannot, this is the reason why I keep enlightening people to the best of my ability not to fall for another affliction in the name of, oh, we are in a hurry. I'll give you an example. This same, this, this same level of excitement you're seeing now happened on a small scale in Edo State in the off-season election with uh, Obaseki. Oh, you know, the diaspora. Obaseki, but I told him, I said, why don't, you, why don't you question what this guy has to offer? Now, all of them have come to an agreement that Obaseki is an affliction, that he lied to them, he deceived them, to vote for him now, they don't want to hear from him, they don't want to see him, they don't want to see his. Yeah, but that, that's internal politics, that's not governance. No, he was government, he was governorship election now. I, I know, I know. Yeah. The, the reason why he's having discordant tunes in the party is because you know they have it's not the party, party issue, issues it also has to do with, with Dan Obi. No, no, it's, it also has to do with his performance. Right. People are very upset with his performance, you know. So, but when they were campaigning for him, they campaigned against him. It's, ah, Edo is not Lagos. You understand? Because mm. uh, Emilokon was trying to interfere in their local politics. Now, you know, people of Edo State are very fierce when it comes to protecting their independence. Mm. But today, look at it. It, it. You know, Edo has become the, the same jungle as Lagos. The man hasn't done anything for them. So this is why we keep telling people, when we say this, that look, what you should go for is substance. And I tell you, there are some young people who are following Obi, who genuinely believe, I mean genuinely, you gotta respect them, that they are following somebody with vision. You know? But the problem is that they don't ask questions. They don't, I'm sure 90% of them have never come to a conclusion where they say, listen, what, what is this guy actually offering us? Just the same way people forgot to ask Buhari what he had to offer in 2015. And now everybody's like, we wish we asked him when they said well, they're going to make a dollar to Naira. Mm. And Buhari's people said, no, we never said that. Let me, let me hold you on that dollar <laughs> issue. Yes. Quick, quick. And today, less about 7 and 40 Naira mm. to a dollar. Yes. What are you going to do immediately to, to stop this you know, rise of the dollar? The continuous fall of the Naira. Yes. The problem with the Naira is that Naira has become a currency for trading as opposed to a currency for policy. Currencies are supposed to guide the policy of a country, macroeconomic mm, policy. Policies. But what they are doing with the Naira 
is that a few people with the use of multiple exchange rates of the Naira are just manipulating the Naira the way they like. So if I rent a house from you now, and I'm supposed to, I've paid three years, so I'm supposed to pay. You cannot, you can't really dramatically increase the rent because, the Naira, but if I have dollars, I have advantage over you. Mm. You understand? Because I can bring in $1,000 and it will be 700,000 Naira. But as of 2017, you know, maybe, I'm talking about 2014, it was 200 and something. But with the multiple exchange rates that they are maintaining, the dollar can never gain value. Stabilize. Because the central bank people just give dollar allocations to politically connected yeah, persons. Yeah, but, but these multiple exchange rates. And they go and sell it. Are for a purpose. Which purpose? It's, now, there are people that it's are. It's for people to enrich themselves. Because people that, people that produce locally sometimes have to import raw materials. And the NCBN is trying was, to accommodate that was, them. That was the excuse they gave. Right. It's not like the excuse they have always been given about what is it called? Subsidies. Mm. They'll tell you that, oh, if we remove subsidy, we will use the money we gain from it to help the people. Mm. And I've been telling people, and most people don't know, kerosene is not subsidized. Gas is not subsidized. Diesel is not subsidized. Uh, what is it called? Jet A A1 fuel is not subsidized. How is it that we are not getting the excess value that subsidy could have They're not as used as, as petrol. No. In terms of what consumption. are you talking about? Kerosene is very, very scarce. Yes, because they are, they are being, what, what about yeah. gas? Hmm. Everybody, most Nigerians cook these days with uh, gas. Yeah. But they want you that don't cook gas, don't cook beans with gas because of the cost of gas. And it takes longer to cook beans with it. That's a joke. Uh, but what I'm trying to say to you is that all the unsubsidized products, what have we gained from them? Are you getting my point? The same thing with the Naira. The Naira, yes, is supposed to help importers, people going to school. But is it actually getting to them? Can you today go and apply for Naira at 350 or whatever it is for oh, yeah, importers and actually get enough that you need if you don't have connection? And let me ask you, if you want to import raw materials, a simple uh, technical analogy. You want to import raw materials for your company. Mm. And when you are done with making your product, your profit is maybe, you know, 30 million naira. After you are done with your importation clearance, if you can sell the dollar and make 30 million, where would you go and buy it? <laughs> Why would you be importing raw materials? Yeah, but you see, they don't pay the dollar to you. Do you understand it? They don't pay the dollar to you directly. They pay it to your foreign vendor. Yes, you can go and collect it from them. You can I mean, In Nigeria, only... <laughs> you can completely make up that vendor. But I guarantee you don't even need to work that hard. Mm, mm, Somebody mm. in the central bank there will allocate it to you, take the paper from you, take his own, and send it to the BDC. Most of the central bank officials also have their own BDCs. Mm. All these bank managers, banks in GMDs in, that you see in Lagos are making money. Most of them are just flipping dollars. You know? And then you look at the, the interest rate of the, of, you know, the bank interest yeah, the bank rate. Interest rate. Most ridiculous. How do you have 15% interest rates in a country? So it's not, it's not going to work. So if I go and borrow money from, from you to do something, like I want to manufacture, mm. an interest rate is 15%. And I'm competing against a Chinese who gets the same loan from a Chinese bank at three percent. How am I going to survive in the world? But if you ask the question, what do we do? Abolish the multiple interest rate first and mm. foremost. The multiple currency. Go, yeah, interest rate first and foremost. Well, that's okay. in the immediate. Secondly, the guys who are managing our macroeconomic policies don't know what they are doing. I cannot believe that anybody will keep the central bank governor there. Initially. Yes, since he's been with Buhari, was with Jonathan. The person who saw the rise and fall of the Naira, he's a guy who was managing Naira when it was 250. He's now at 730. You keep him there. There must be a reason why they're keeping him there. He even had the audacity to get involved in politics in a way that is obvious, that he has lost credibility. Why do you think they're keeping him there? 
Because it's helping them to get dollars to sell now. <laughs> like it's helping them to allocate dollars. They can never remove him. Because they know if they remove him, a lot of, things, a lot of them will go down with him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you.